Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tibedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects related to the central dogma of molecular biology. So, in the previous uh, module, we have discussed about the replications and uh, where we have discussed about the replication in the prokaryotes and replication in the eukaryotes. Apart from that, we have also discussed about how the replication is playing a pivotal role in uh, uh, making the DNA damage and repairs. And uh, if you recall in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about the what are the different other processes occurring in the central dogma of molecular biology. So, what we have uh, discussed that the central dogma of molecular biology is a very, very concentrated and very, very regulated process in which the DNA is going to be multiplied so that the DNA can be divided between the uh, between the mother cell and the daughter cell. And on the other hand, the DNA is going to give rise to the RNA and that RNA is going to be responsible for the uh, production of the protein. So, the production of or the, or the synthesis of the uh, RNA from the DNA is, a, is being uh, catalyzed by the RNA polymerase and this process is known as transcription. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the transcription and how the transcription is actually going to be done in the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic system. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the, uh, the prokaryotic genes, the eukaryotic genes and how the prokaryotic uh, uh, transcription in the prokaryotes is being done versus the uh, transcription in the eukaryotes. So, when we when you say the transcription, transcription means that there will be a synthesis of the RNA from the DNA and this process is called as the transcription and this process is being catalyzed by a enzyme which is called as the RNA polymerase. And RNA polymerase is a very uh, multimeric uh, protein complex and it has the sub multiple subunits both in the prokaryote and as well as the eukaryotic cells. And uh, the RNA polymerase uh, uh, is a very, very important enzyme for giving the DNA from the RNA. Now, before we getting into the details of the transcription, it is important for us to understand the, uh, the about the gene and how the gene is being different from the prokaryotes versus the eukaryotes. So, what is transcription? So, as we already discussed, the transcription is the synthesis of the RNA from the DNA. So, every cell contains three different types of RNA that is the transfer RNA or the tRNA, ribosomal RNA or the rRNA and the messenger RNA or the mRNA. Synthesis of RNA from the DNA template with the help of the DNA dependent RNA polymerase is known as transcription. It occurs unidirectionally in which the chain is synthesized in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime. The segment which is transcribed from the DNA is known as the transcription unit. Okay? So, the DNA, the synthesis of the DNA to RNA is called as transcription and we have the three different types of RNAs. We have the ribosomal RNA, we have the ribosomal RNA, we have the tRNA and we have the messenger RNA. And if you recall when we were talking about, when we were discussing about the biomolecules, we have discussed about the structure of the messenger RNA and how you can be able to purify the messenger RNA from the cell with the help of the two different methods. We have discussed about the trisol method and we have also discussed about the affinity purification as well. So, uh, the, the role of these uh, RNA molecules are different, right? Messenger RNA is actually being carry the message, right? So, and it is required for uh, providing the message in what sequence the amino acids are actually going to be uh, attached. The tRNA is actually going to be uh, ca carry the amino acid 
you know that the proteins are made up of, of the amino acid that also we have discussed in the previous module. So, it will actually going to carry the amino acid on one side and on the other side it also going to carry the information so that it will actually going to recognize uh, carry the information to recognize the messenger RNA right. So, it is actually going to carry it is going to recognize it is going to carry the amino acid and as well as it is actually going to recognize the messenger RNA and then the ribosomal RNA it is actually going to synthesize the protein ok. So, it is actually going to uh, form the ribosomes and that is actually going to synthesize the uh, protein by forming a peptide bond between the amino acid which is going to be carried by the transfer RNA. So, basically all these uh, RNA molecules are uh, going to have one or other functions and uh, they are actually going to be formed from the DNA which is uh, by a process which is called as the transcription. So, we have separate uh, genes for uh, synthesizing the ribosomal RNA, tRNA and messenger RNAs. And the segment which is transcribed from the DNA is known as the transcriptional unit. So, in a, in a eukaryotes it is actually the monocystronic transcriptional unit which occurs to code for single polypeptide whereas in the prokaryote it is actually going to be polycystronic. Polycystronic means it is actually going to transcribe and it is actually going to give you the more than one polypeptide. So, in a transcriptional unit what you have you have a promoter right this is the promoter then you are going to have the coding sequence and then you are also going to have the terminators and uh, both are all, all these three segments have their specific role that promoter is actually going to provide a docking site for the RNA polymerase to initiate and get started. Whereas, the RNA coding sequence is actually the coding sequence which actually is going to give you the RNA. It could be it could be messenger RNA, it could be transfer RNA or it could be ribosomal RNA and once the synthesis is over then they are actually going to be a sequence which are actually going to bring the ending of these sequences. So, promoter is actually going to be a going to help in the starting of the transcription uh, replication uh, 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 transcription the coding sequence is actually going to uh, allow the elongation and uh, that is how the elongation will continue and then termination sequences are actually going to have the termination. So, it is going to help in the termination and uh, we are going to see the features of all of these uh, uh, um, uh, components of the transcriptional units. So, transcriptional unit uh, as I said you know it is going to be having the promoters, coding sequence and the terminator. So, promoter is going to be a starting point. It is going to be for elongation and this is for the termination. So, what is the start point? It is the first base pair from where the transcription start and it is called as the start site. RNA polymerase from the moves from the start point along with the template synthesize the RNA up to the termination sequence and you have the upstream and as well as the downstream sequences. So, upstream it is a non template nucleotide in the 5 prime end or the minus direction which is sequence before the start point. So, this is actually the start point. Uh, and before the start point you are going to have the promoter. So, that is going to be upstream sequences. Then you also are going to have a downstream sequences. So, it is a nucleotide in the 3 prime end or the plus direction. So, it is this is going to be the downstream directions and it is actually going to be a sequence after the start point. DNA is a double helix structure. So, during transcription only the one strand is transcribed. So, that the transcriptional sequence is identical with the one strand of the DNA known as the coding or the sense strand and the other complementary strand is known as the template or the anti sense strand. You know that the uh, uh, transcription is going to occur in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime. This means it is actually going to read 
the information from the 3 prime to 5 prime strand okay so it's actually going to read the sequence from the 3 prime to 5 prime strand and that's why so if you see that if the if the rna polymerase is going to sit here and it is actually going to run in this direction on the this strand then it is actually going to synthesize a rna which actually going to have the 5 prime on this side and 3 prime on this side and that's why this sequence uh, is actually going to be a non coding strand right this is going to be called as non coding strand because this is actually going to be providing the template whereas this sequence is actually going to be a coding strand okay before we discuss about the prokaryotic transcription and the eukaryotic transcription we will actually going to see the difference between the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic transcription so the what is the difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic transcription remember that the prokaryotic transcription is uh, or prokaryotic genes are polycystronic whereas eukaryotic genes are monocystronic so that is very very and that actually brings the difference in terms of their transcription so the first difference is that the prokaryotic transcription or the prokaryotic genes are polycystronic which means they are actually going to code for many polypeptides whereas the eukaryotic gene is going to be monocystronic so it is actually going to code for single polypeptide this means you are going to have the multiple genes uh, present within the prokaryotic transcription unit whereas you are going to have the single gene uh, since there is no nucleus right the prokaryotic transcription occurs within the cytoplasm right because the dna is also present in the cytoplasm whereas the eukaryotic transcription occurs inside the nucleus and within the nucleus you are going to have the synthesis of the messenger rna tRNA and uh, ribosomal RNA. Number three because the transcription is occurring in the two different compartments the transcription is not coupled with the translation in the case of the eukaryotic transcription because so it is not going to have the coupled transcription and the translation because the transcriptional unit and the translational units are present in the separate quarter right so they are actually present in the separate compartment whereas in this case it is actually going to have the coupled transcription and the translation which means it is actually going to have the transcription as soon as the rna comes out right it is actually going to be recognized by the translational unit and then the translation and the transcription will continue at the same time uh, number four, uh, single type of RNA polymerase required for the synthesis of all type of RNAs. So, it is going to have the single RNA molecule, RNA polymerase molecule, which is actually going to be utilized for production or for the synthesis of all type of RNA, whether it is messenger RNA, tRNA and ribosomal RNA. Whereas, in the case of eukaryotic system, you are going to have the three different types of RNA polymerase, which is required for the synthesis of the all different types of RNAs. Then number five, you are going to have, there is no need for any transcriptional factor for the initiation. So, because, why it is so? Because the RNA polymerase is competent enough to start the, initiate the transcription. Whereas, in the case of the eukaryotic transcription, the eukaryotic transcription requires the transcriptional factor for the initiation. So, actually the transcriptional factor are actually going to recognize the promoters and then only the RNA polymerase will come and bind. So, that anyway you will understand when we are going to discuss about the transcription in the eukaryotic as well as the prokaryotic units. The number 6 you are going to have the RNA polymerase are made up of, of the 5 subunits whereas the RNA polymerase are made up of, of the 10 to 15 subunits. So, RNA polymerase is big and complex in the case of eukaryotic system whereas the RNA polymerase is small and simple in the case of eukaryotic, uh, prokaryotic system. Now, let us see what is the machinery of the prokaryotic system. 
So we will first discuss about the transcription in the prokaryotes and then we are also going to discuss about the transcription in eukaryotes. Many of these steps or the many of the basic steps are going to be remain same between the prokaryotic transcription and the eukaryotic transcription. So that we are not going to repeat when we are going to uh, discuss about the transcription in the prokaryotes. So transcription in uh, prokaryotes. RNA polymerase. In prokaryotes, a single type of RNA polymerase is present which is responsible for the synthesis of all types of RNA. Eubacterial RNA polymerase is a holoenzyme and it is a multi subunit protein which contains the 5 different subunits alpha, alpha, beta, beta and sigma actually. And alpha is the assembly of the core enzyme. So, you are going to have the alpha, alpha as the assembly of the core enzyme. So, assembler, alpha is actually going to be to form the core enzyme, whereas the beta and beta prime are going to perform all the enzymatic and catalytic functions. So, this is the beta and the beta prime, which is actually going to perform the enzymatic and the catalytic activities and sigma is actually going to recognize the promoter sequences. So, you are going to have the core enzyme which is going to be formed by the 2 alpha and beta and beta prime whereas the holo enzyme is going to contain the core enzyme plus the sigma factors and these sigma factors are going to be different uh, for the different types of genes. So, that is how you are actually having a very simple system where you are going to have the RNA polymerase made up of, of the 5 different types of subunits and all these 5 different, different subunits can be divided into 2 part. One is the core enzyme and the other is the sigma factor and the, within the core enzyme you are going to have the 2 alpha subunits and the beta and beta prime and uh, this is being done only to conserve the uh, conserve the energy right because if you are synthesizing the uh, RNA polymerase according to the different types of promoters or according to the different types of RNA species what you require then you are supposed to synthesize a large number of RNA polymerases and RNA polymerase is a big enzyme and a big protein right. So, to conserve the energy what the bacteria has decided or the prokaryotic system has decided that I will actually going to have the core enzyme which will actually going to have all the activities so that it actually going to have the it will be able to read the DNA sequences, it will be able to have the uh, you know the synthesis activity and so on. But to recognize the uh, genes, to recognize the promoters we are actually going to have the sigma factors and that is how you can be able to have the single core enzyme associated with the multiple types of sigma factors and that is how you, you can actually be able to utilize the same uh, for the multiple genes and that is how you can be able to conserve the energy. Now, the second part is the promoter. So, prokaryotic promoters are simple uh, compared to the eukaryotic uh, promoters, right. So, they are simple. So, prokaryotic uh, promoters typically consist of a 40 base pair region located near to the 5 prime end of the transcriptional start site. Promoter region consists of the 2 6 bare consensus sequences called Primbo box or the Tata box and the minus 35 region. Primbo box is, uh, is a 10 base pair upstream of start point and it is a, having a consensus sequence of TATTAT. Whereas, minus 35 region has the consensus sequence of TTGACA. So, this is actually going to be the uh, promoter, uh, the typical promoter uh, what is present in the prokaryotic system where you are going to have this is actually going to be called as the start site. So, this is actually going to be if this is the going to be the start site to the 5 prime end which means to the upstream of this you are going to have the minus 10 region and then you are going to have the minus 35 region and within the minus 35 region you are going to have the sequences which is going to be TTGACA whereas in the minus 10 region you are going to have a sequence which is called as TATAAT which means uh, you are basically going to have a combination of these two 
and the length or the distances between the two uh, these two region is actually and the nucleotide what are present in these regions are actually going to decide whether the promoter is going to be a strong promoter or it is actually going to be a weak promoter and depending upon that uh, you are actually going to have the different types of uh, uh, you know the, 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 the transcriptional activity of a particular gene is going to be different. So, this means the synthesis of the protein molecules are completely going to be governed by the strength of the promoter and that is how uh, you can actually be able to modulate the, uh, the, ex the expression as well as the production of a particular protein simply by modulating this because in the prokaryotic system remember that the transcription and the translation is going to be occur simultaneously. So, as soon as the RNA species is going to be formed and it is going to be present in the cytosol or it is actually still be uh, uh, you know doing the transcription it will be available for the translational machine and it is then going to start synthesis. So, that is why you can actually have the better control over the protein production uh, during the transcription itself and that anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the control mechanism within the transcription and where we are going to discuss about the different types of operons. So, here what we have is we these are the uh, these are the three important or four important events what is going to occur uh, in the transcription right. So, uh, transcription uh, in the prokaryote occurs in the four stages one is uh, number one is the template binding, number two is the chain uh, the initiation, number three is the chain elongation and number four is termination. So, the number one step is uh, when the template is going to recognize this by the RNA polymerase and that is how it is actually going to initiate the uh, synthesis of the RNA. So, the number one event is the binding of RNA polymerase to the template DNA and the chain initiation. So, the DNA duplex should be opened so that the RNA pole can approach to the single standard DNA templates. Efficiency of the initiation is inversely proportional to the melting temperature that is the TM and the AT rich region has the lower TM because of the double bond hydrogen bonding and then the triple bond in GC region and thus it is more stable. Therefore, the AT rich is good for melting of duplex and easy to create the open promoter complex than the GC rich region. So, this region where the uh, RNA polymerase is going to go and sit and then actually going to uh, break the DNA or the unwind the DNA should be AT rich so that it should be easy for RNA polymerase to find uh, the single standard uh, DNA and that is how it is going to initiate. So, RNA polymerase has sigma factor uh, so, and you know that the different, there are different types of sigma factors for the different types of uh, genes. So, you are going to RNA polymerase as sigma factor which recognize the promoter sequence at which the RNA polymerase holoenzyme binds and forms a complex which is known as the closed complex. In fact, the sigma factor is released when the chain reaches nearly to the 10 base pair leaving the core enzyme for the further elongation. So, what happen is that suppose this is the promoter region right. If this is the promoter region, if this promoter region is actually going to be recognized by the sigma factor and as soon as the sigma factor will go and bind, then the RNA polymerase will come and it is actually going to bind the sigma factor. And then this complex is going to unbind the DNA, it is going to form the single standard DNA and that is how it is actually going to start the synthesis of the RNA. So, it is actually going to start running so RNA polymerase is actually going to start running in this direction and once the RNA polymerase start and it goes for another 10 nucleotides right. So, if it goes for 10 nucleotide then the sigma factor will actually going to be dissociate right. So, sigma factor is actually going to dissociate from the temp from the RNA polymerase and then it will actually be available for the next gene and that is how you see here in this is, uh, event also the bacteria is trying to conserve the energy right. So, same sigma factor suppose you have 10 different types of genes and uh, you want to do the transcription right. So, sigma factor will go and sit in the gene number 1 right and it will facilitate the process of RNA polymerase to come and 
uh, start the synthesis, right? So it's actually going to start the transcription, right? So this is called gene number one. Now, as soon as this is done, the sigma factor will come out from here and it will go to the gene number two, right? Then from here, as soon as it is done, it would, can go to the gene number three and so on, right? And that is how you see that you do not have to synthesize neither the RNA polymerase nor the sigma factor and you can be able to efficiently be able to synthesize the RNA uh, from the DNA molecules and that is how you can be able to have the um, efficient system and the you uh, at the other hand you are also going to have the conservation of the energy as well. So, the first step is the binding of RNA polymerase to the template DNA and the initiation. The second part is that the binding of RNA polymerase to the template DNA and chain initiation. So, the DNA duplex should be, so this is what anyway we have discussed already. Then your, is, uh, at this stage it is actually going to form the two different types of complexes. One is called as the open complexes, the other is called as the closed complexes. So, let us see what happened when it is going to form the open complex. So, uh, open complex which is actually going to form when the, uh, is, uh, the sigma factor is going to bind, the closed complex is converted into open complex by melting a short region of DNA that is the minus 10 base pair and the RNA polymer is bind at the promoter region and unbind and it covers minus 55 to plus 1. Remember plus 1 is the first nucleotide for the transcription. Uh, so, total 50 base pair, 55 base pairs and start the initiation here of the one template strand available for the incomplete nucleotide for the base pairing and then synthesis of RNA occurs. Minus 10 region of the template is essential for the recognition. The promoter regions are double standard in closed complex and the single standard in the open complexes. RNA polymerase has two binding sites for the nucleotide. One is the initiation site and the other is the elongation site. Initiation site binds to the first nucleotide within the open promoter complex at the plus one site, which is usually a purine or the purine uh, A or G. It means the first nucleotide would be either the ATP or the GTP. Elongation site binds with the second incoming nucleotide base pairing at the plus 2 positions. The two nucleotides are joined together and the first base is released from the initiation site and the initiation is complete. So, this is what it is actually going to happen, right. So, first it is actually the sigma factor will go and recognize the promoter and then it is actually going to facilitate the binding of the RNA polymerase and then RNA polymerase when it binds to the promoter region is actually going to unbind and it is actually going to uncover the 55 base pairs, right. So, it is going to have the uh, uh, plus 1 site. So, from minus 55 to plus 1 site it is actually going to unbind the DNA and then it is actually going to start the initiation which means at the first nucleotide it is actually going to add the nucleotide. Uh, and I, it prefers that that particular nucleotide should be either uh, A or the G, right. So, that is why the first nucleotide could be either the ATP or the GTP. Uh, then it is going to have the second nucleotide and there will be a bond which is actually going to be formed between the first nucleotide and the second nucleotide. So, it is going to have the uh, bond which is going to be formed and that is how it is actually going to start the synthesis. So, this is going to be the initiation step. After the initiation it is actually going to enter into the elongation step. So, the chain elongation, chain elongation occurs in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and RNA synthesis is carried out by the transcription bubble which forms due to the tra transient separation of double standard DNA into the single standard RNA and the transcription take place at the template strand. So, once it actually going to leave the promoter region, the, it is actually going to enter into the elongation site and that is how the uh, RNA polymerase will be keep moving and it is going to keep synthesizing the RNA. Now, after this it is actually going to reach to a region which is going to be a termination site and that is how it will enter into the termination region. So, 
RNA chain synthesis occur basically at 5 prime to 3 prime ends direction by adding a nucleotide at the 3 prime end and the 3 prime end group of the last nucleotide is combined to the incoming of 5 prime gamma phosphate nucleotide. Alpha and beta phosphate groups are removed and only the gamma phosphate is used in the formation of phosphodiester bond. Likewise, other nucleotide added which are complementary to the template DNA and thus the chain, RNA chain termination a strand translocation occurs. In bacterial transcription rate is nearly 40 to 50 nucleotides per second at 37 degrees Celsius which is nearly same as the translation in prokaryote which is 50 amino acids per second. Uh, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and create a transcriptional bubble. RNA polymerase moves along with the DNA RNA chain grows continuously. The length of the transcriptional bubble is approximately 12 to 40 nucleotides. So, this is this open area is going to be of 12 to 14 nucleotides and uh, the length of the RNA DNA hybrid is about 8 to 9 base pairs. So, within this there will be a region where the RNA and DNA will still have the uh, double standard DNA, double strands and it is going to have the RNA DNA hybrid. As the RNA polymerase moves, the duplets reforms against, the RNA hangs as a free nucleotide uh, chain, free uh, polynucleotide chain. The transcription bubble moves continuously by disrupting the DNA structure. Nucleotides are added covalently to the 3 prime of the chain of the RNA, beta and gamma phosphates are removed from the incoming nucleotide and hydroxyl is removed from the 3 prime carbon nucleotide present at the end of the chain. So, that is how it is actually going to occurs into the uh, elongation phase. Now, once it reaches to the termination site, it is going to end up the uh, into the termination uh, phase and that is how the, 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 the termination of the transcription is going to occur. So, chain terminations. So, when the RNA polymerase stop adding a nucleotide at the RNA chain, it releases a complete product and the RNA chain get free from the termination sequence. During termination, all the hydrogen bond break down which holds the DNA RNA hybrid together and when the RNA chain is separated from the DNA again form the duplex. Site at which the site enzyme stop adding the nucleotide is known as the chain termination site. So, at the chain termination site, it is actually going to have the uh, stop the progression of the RNA polymerase that is the first event. The second, there will be a disruption or the breaking of the hydrogen bond between the RNA DNA hybrid. And after that, the RNA is actually going to fall into the cytoplasm uh, and along with the RNA, it, uh, the RNA polymerase is also going to fall and that is how it is actually going to terminate the transcription. Uh, and uh, once the, trans the, tra the termination is occurs, the DNA which is duplex uh, is going to be reformed. Uh, the, there are two different types of mechanism which are being proposed for the termination, one is called as the intrinsic termination and the other is called as the row factor dependent terminations. So, let us discuss about the termination. So, intrinsic termination, intrinsic termination is being done by the sequence present within the termination site. Okay. So, these sequences are unique sequences. So, they will actually going to have the one purpose that to stop the growth of RNA polymerase, right. If you stop the growth of the RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase is a very big enzyme. So, the DNA RNA duplex what is being formed or the hybrid what is being formed is actually holding the RNA polymerase onto the template, right. So, if there is a growth, if there is a, uh, you stop the growth of the RNA polymerase, then RNA polymerase cannot over, uh, be remain onto the template and that is how it is actually going to uh, terminate the uh, transcription. So, how that this is occurs actually is that these intrinsic termination sites are actually going to have the sequences. Uh, in such a way that it is actually going to form a loop like structure, right. You see here, right, you have the A, A, T, A, G, 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 C, A, A, C like that 
and on this side also you are going to have the GGA C G C C C right. So if I look, if I if I show you this, it is actually going to form a loop like structure like this. It's going to form a loop like structure like this, and this one also is actually going to form a loop like structure. And because of that, and see, you see that these are the high in GC content and high R AT content, which is going to be followed on the other side. So, it, because of that, it is actually going to form the stem and the hair loop, hairpin loop kind of structures. And you know that when the hairpin like structure is going to be formed, the RNA it cannot actually have the stability because these loops are actually going to have the strong GC content. And because of that, the RNA polymerase cannot break. So, in this mechanism of termination, the row factor is not required and the termination depends on the RNA product. It requires a GC rich hairpin. Hairpin structure is followed by 7 U residues. So, RNA DNA hybrid requires the forces for holding the elongation complex together. Thus, when the hybrid gets detached, it collapses and the elongation complex which causes the termination. In this type of termination, the dissociation of the polymerase occurs by destabilizing the attachment of the growing chain to the template. During this process, the hairpin structure is formed by the transcription while complementary base pairing. It includes the palindromic sequences. This system loop structure includes the GC rich region which is followed by the uh, U, U, U rich region. So, because of that, it, it, it does not get the enough strength to hold the RNA and on the other hand, the RNA polymerase will be going to stop by a strong GC rich region and because of these two events, it is actually going to stop the, uh, the transcriptional uh, activity of the RNA polymerase. So, the steps in the transcriptional termination is that the different steps are as follows. Here, the two inverted repeat that the GC, 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 GC are present in the DNA template which is transcribed. So, nearly the 6 adenine residues follows the second inverted repeat that is the GC, CC, GC and number 3 is now inverted repeats are forming a hairpin structure which cause the RNA polymerase. So, this is what I was talking about right you are going to have the hairpin structure and it is being formed because you have a very high GC rich region right so this is the high GC followed by the U region right and U is actually going to have the uh, low uh, affinity right it is going to have the low affinity because the low U is actually going to have the higher uh, lower affinity for the uh, template and because of that this, this cannot uh, withstand the, uh, the RNA polymerase cannot hold the RNA polymerase and on the other hand this will not allow the RNA polymerase to cross. So, RNA polymerase if, if it is sitting here, it cannot go on this side or it cannot actually break this particular bond. So, due to the formation of the stem loop structure and the AU bond get breakdown uh, leads the termination and the RNA molecule get separated. So, this is what exactly it is actually going to happen. Now, the second method is the row dependent termination. So, row dependent termination, this type of termination requires a row protein and the row is a ATP dependent helicase that disrupt the RNA DNA hybrid. So, rho is actually having a is a protein which actually has a very high affinity for the RNA molecules. So, it is an essential protein which causes the transcriptional termination. Rho protein is a hexamer ATP dependent helicase and it actually sub uh, its subunit contains the RNA binding and the ATP hydrolysis domain. These rho proteins firstly bind to the sequence which is present at the upstream of termination site. These sites are called root uh, RUT sites. These sites are rich in the C residue. C residues rho factor follow to the RNA polymerase until it do not catch the RNA polymerase. Rho follow the RNA polymerase by its helicase activity which is driven by the ATP hydrolysis. When the RNA polymerase reaches at the termination site, the rho protein frees the structure of the polymerase and when the rho factors collapse with the enzyme which causes the termination and the new chain get released. So, this is what exactly happens. So, rho factor is actually 
binding the RNA polymerase and it is running along with the RNA polymerase. But when the RNA polymerase reaches at the termination site, it, its speeds get slower down, right? And that is how the RNA polymerase actually, uh, rope actually proteins actually catches the RNA polymerase and that is how they are actually going to dislodge the RNA DNA hybrid and at the end the RNA is going to be RNA DNA hybrid uh, RNA as well as rho and uh, the RNA polymerase will fall into the cytoplasm and that is how it is actually going to terminate the, uh, the polymerase and the, uh, the ter transcription into the prokaryotes. So, this is all about the transcription in prokaryotes. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more about the transcription in eukaryotes. So, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the transcriptional unit, we have discussed about what is the coding strand and the, what is the non-coding strands and we have also discussed about the transcriptional machinery in the prokaryotes where we have the sigma factor and the RNA polymerase and we have then uh, in the previous two uh, previous uh, few slides we have also discussed about the transcription in prokaryotes how the different events are occurring and how the termination is occurring. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the transcription in eukaryotes. Thank you.